Hi, everyone. Welcome to At Matters by the Outer Loop Theater Experience, where we create art that matters. I'm Michael Herman, Executive Director of the Outer Loop. And here on At Matters, we like to create a space to explore the question, what are we here to do through the lens of art for social change? Here with me today, I have Melissa Wilson, um, Inner NSO facilitator and marketing director, among many other things. I do those things. You do Hi. do those things. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into today's episode and conversation, um, as our loyal listeners and watchers know, we like to start every episode with our five things game. Um, which is where we each propose uh, a five things category. No thinking, the other person just comes up with whatever they think of on the spot. Cool? Cool, cool. You want to give me a category first or should I give you a category first? Sure, I can go first. Okay. Um, the category which I propose to you um, is uh, give five things that with me or with other like interns or young employees or whatever, um, our little age gap moments, whether it's on your end or on our end, fallen into the age gap. Uh, only five. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. I think most of these are going to probably live in the technology universe. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think anything related to TikTok is generally a huge generation gap that I fall into. Right. I'm, I feel like I'm getting a little better at that, but um, <laughs> those are always fun. Um, yeah, I think general technology things, like if something's not working, you know, like with this podcast or in some kind of tech aspect with, um, you know, audio or video recording or anything like that, I used to, and I think Rachel would probably agree with this, I used to feel very much like I was the person who was going to fix those things. Uh, and now you're the person who <laughs> fixes those things. So that's another area. Um I think um, another um, generation gap that I fall into and in, enjoy falling into is uh, learning from y uh, like your generation or, or you know, younger artists uh, just coming out of school, really getting to broaden my perspective on humans in general and artists. That's always it's I'm noticing that a lot and it's really great to be exposed to to your generation and, and um, younger artists um, ugh, like TV shows and movies, right? Like you'll yeah. make a reference and um, it's crickets because I have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. And I think we both probably have a similar reaction to that. Our shock at the other person's lack of understanding what we're right. talking about is, I think, equally um like astonishing yeah <laughs> um how could you possibly not know this reference um and then i think also um tra how we i've noticed because we've you and i have traveled together now and also uh separately but to similar events um and just how i think different aged people deal with travel and and their comfort levels and their, um, what's the way to say it? They're like, yeah, comfort with certain modes of travel versus the complications some people seem to think exist, you know, me mostly. Um, and whereas you're a lot more kind of, yeah, it's cool, man. I'll just, I'll be <laughs> there. It's fine. Um, yeah. So that's a good question. I like that one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Amazing. Good answer. Nice. Um, cool. So my category is five things. So you've been with the outer loop. How long now? Almost. Is it a year? A little over a year. If because I started my internship, right? September of a little over a year. Yeah, yeah, a little over a year. So in that little over a year, five things that you enjoy most about your job. Ooh. Okay. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I never thought that this would be something I would do, but I really love designing like 
specifically like brochures and our programs for shows and stuff that's like I don't know it's just like freeing for me for some reason I really enjoy it um I enjoy just like all the people that I get to work with like when it was just you me and Rachel we had so many good times together and now there's even more people and I have really good times with all of those people and yeah so I love that um I love how much I get to travel um you know Tanzania being like an obvious big one but also I live in DC and I'm just like popping over to New York or to Chicago pretty frequently for work and like to tell middle school Melissa like oh yes you're just going into New York City for the weekend for work like (laughs) it's, it's just like my dad is always reminding me I'm like oh I'm so tired and he's like bro this is a big deal you know yeah Um, and I do love it. Um, I enjoy, um, script development, which is also Mm. something I didn't like think was gonna be part of my life, but I really enjoy. Um, and I, I also just feel like similarly to one of your answers, funny enough, but like, I just feel like I get exposed to so many different perspectives, you know, like we, I talk to my coworkers and I get certain perspectives and then we go to fundraising events and I'm hearing different perspectives. And then, I mean, obviously Tanzania and all these different projects we're working on, there's just all these different people from all these different walks of life who have in some ways like similar vocabulary around our care for the arts and how important we think the arts are, but also coming from such different backgrounds. And I've loved getting to have my perspective broadened to harken back to last week's episode. Um, but but seriously by everybody i get to meet so yeah that's cool yeah awesome um that's a good <clears throat> segue into our what we're going to talk about today um the conversation we're going to have which is really for me is is um exciting because it's incredibly directly tied to like the relationship you and I have uh, yeah. <laughs> professionally, which is the, yeah. the value of providing career opportunities for young artists. Um, so I'm really excited to have that conversation. Um, but I know there's some, I think, is there, there's like some language that that we use yeah. in a lot of our like online presence that you felt was important to talk about. Yeah, I thought just in like establishing like our perspective and where we're coming from in this conversation like this is just the language that's on our website that like describes what we do as a company that i think is super upfront about all of this and then we can get into the conversation after that but um yeah so what our website says is we work primarily but not exclusively with students from schools colleges and universities to give them professional opportunities before they graduate while allowing them to hone their craft we understand the value of experience combined with education in developing one's skills in the theater and seek to provide this for young and emerging artists. And yeah, mm. I I have loved both because I benefit from it personally, but um, also mm. because I get to see how it helps other people and the people around me, like how much of a core part of the outer loop this is. And, and so I was curious, like, obviously you started the outer loop. So like, wh- where did this aspect of the vision for the company come from like what was the story there yeah so so many so many pieces to that so when i got out of school and started to think about what i wanted to do um and i knew i wanted to start my own theater company. But in the meantime, um, I needed to work. So I needed to have a job and I needed to make money to live. So I found myself applying for jobs and getting interviews. And in those interviews, being asked about like previous experience. And I really didn't have a ton then. Um, And I, and and after, you know, uh, no, recognizing a, a pattern there in the, a lot of those conversations and interactions of employers wanting you to have experience, but no one seemed willing to be the first ones to give you that experience that you need that they're asking for. So it was like mm-hmm. this, yeah, like conundrum. 
that I don't think people were aware of. Um, so for me in, in starting the company, it was very important to fill that gap or that space that I saw that existed. And, you know, the, how I've come to talk about it over the years is that I viewed the company as I viewed the outer loop as this bridge or this ramp between learning um, about what you want to go out and do in school and then doing it right. But doing it felt like it meant you had to already know how to do it. And a lot of us, don't or didn't at the beginning, right? So could we could we bridge that gap and be a space and a home for young or early career artists where it's safe to fail? The stakes are low. We know we're admitting and we're acknowledging that our entire existence is based on you don't yet have the skills or you have them and you need to hone them, refine them. And then you're going to move on once you feel good about that or not. Some people have stuck around for a while, but you know, the idea that if the space here is to, is to create this environment where it's cool to fail, the stakes are low. It's, it's good. We understand. We agree. Not everybody's kind of been out there working for 15 years. And then when you feel good about that, sure, cool, move on and go out there and go to New York, Chicago, wherever you're going to go and do it. And then you now have the experience and the resume line to go in and say, yeah, I've been doing this for a while. I think that's where it initially came from. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's great. And I, I mean, I hear my friends who are not in theater and art spaces talking about that. They're, they're like, I can't get a computer science job because, you know, of the exact same reasons that you're listing. And so I think it really is like a very common experience, no matter what you're in. And so I love that as a company, we're dedicated to like providing that, providing yeah. that bridge. And, and it's impacted me. Like <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm 22. I've been out of college for like a year and a half. Um, and I started as an intern and then became like a part-time employee and now a full-time employee basically. And like, um, and just getting to have those opportunities. And, and I feel like we've had a lot of conversations about, um, us as a company, but also each of us as individuals getting to like be in some exciting rooms lately yeah. that I've been like, like there's a temptation to be like, why am I in this room? Yeah. You know, to be like, I'm 10 years younger than everyone else in this room. I'm way less, that means I'm 10 years less experienced than everyone else in this room. Or I thought that I would be in this room, but that I would be on the other side of it, you know, that mm -hmm. I would be the one like pitching whatever it is. And instead, I'm the one being like, hmm, we'll think about it. You know, like, it's just it's just been funny. And I'm so grateful to have had those experiences. Yeah. And I know, I think we talked a little bit about this recently, when a bunch of us were in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and we had a few we were in a few of those rooms that I think you're you're referencing. And we had a few other um, younger members of the staff with us and we were having a similar conversation about you know sometimes it feels like um whether it whether you want to call it society or just the structure of how certain organizations are set up um or how these these relationships both um inside a company and with other companies traditionally exist that you kind of have to quote, like earn and whatever that means, which often seems to f translate to me like t into time, um, you know, the, the, the right to be in that room. And for me personally, it's never been about uh, time or, you know, like years doing something or skills that you've already demonstrated. It's that, you know, we all know when we're in the presence of or talking to someone who's just got it right? Whatever it is, we know what it is. And it doesn't necessarily mean this person has been doing this for X amount of years or, you know, has done this before. There's no reason that just because someone hasn't done something before that they're not going to be good at it. And how are they going to learn if they're good at it, if you don't give them the opportunity? And I think for me, it's so much more exciting to just feel that it 
coming from someone and go, awesome, feeling the it from this person. If they want the opportunity, provide it, offer it up. And then, you know, then you've kind of opened the door a crack. And if that person wants to step through it, awesome. And if they don't, also fine. But like, for me, watching young artists, um, you know, similar to you, like just out of school and getting started, and maybe initially, like you said, feeling like, am I supposed to be in this room? Or like, can I hang here? And then, as you know, you've, you've felt it, I think, and others have too, watching, watching it just of course, work out and feel like there's no difference in someone in this room, like you or I, who maybe I've been in those rooms for 20 years, and you've been in those rooms for a couple of months. No one else would know that, right? Because Mm -hmm. it's coming across like we all have the same um, kind of uh, contribution to make. And I just feel like, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, that that's generally seems to be more the exception than the rule. And I just feel like the more that we can do to make that vice versa, you know, that that's common to give young, smart, you know, um, talented artists um, that opportunity to get in those rooms and therefore get more comfortable in those rooms sooner Mm -hmm. and therefore set themselves up for success sooner Uh, whatever that means for them. And both in the short term and the long term, if you're in a position like I am to be able to do that, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. That's my approach anyway. (laughs) Yeah. And one thing I've appreciated about it too, is it's not just, okay, yeah, here you can like have that chair in the corner or whatever. (laughs) It's like, oh, and like, what does Melissa think about this? What do these other like younger members of our team think? And like, genuinely like valuing that opinion and and Mm -hmm. like I'm wrong a lot like (laughs) there are so many times when like you know I'll be in meetings with you and Rachel or whatever and you guys will be like okay what do you think about this and I'm like I think this is like I've thought a lot about this and this is what I've come to and you guys will be like okay that's cool like okay here's like where we were at and I'm immediately like oh yeah no that's better because because you guys have like had more years of experience and everything but A, I appreciate that, like, there was room for me to get my opinion out there. So then I could, like, go through the steps of understanding, like, oh, maybe this other thing is a better approach and or or whatever. And then also sometimes, like, you guys are like, oh, wait, we never thought about that before or whatever. And, like, that is a good idea. And so I think it it's beneficial on both ends and whichever way it goes for like the idea is to get out there from all sides. And and I just so appreciate that, like my voice is able to be heard in that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was going to, I use, you kind of said it already. I would say it a a little differently. I was thinking about it um, as you were, as you were saying it was it, you know, the, the flip side is, is often true. Like you, you mentioned where you'll suggest something or have an idea or a point of view and we're we sit there thinking oh yeah no that's right right so i think it it goes both ways uh-huh. um and it, it, i mean it just feels like you're that's the that's what you strive for because that means that everyone's um feels free to share their ideas thoughts and opinions mm-hmm. and also is open to receiving and considering uh, input that's different from what they may have might have thought, which again I think strengthens the argument that I don't know that years or experience has as much to do with it as everyone wants to claim, right? Mm-hmm. Like I think so, so I'm gonna not get get it exactly verbatim to what I heard someone else say recently, but it's something about you know sure you know I started the company what 16 years ago and I've been doing what I do for at least that long, but a little longer in in other capacities. But just because that's true doesn't mean I know what I'm doing, right? Like there's this, there's this like this thing that we all think because people have been doing something longer or they're older or they have more experience that they actually know what they're doing. Like, like that your perception that they know what they're doing is right on. No, I mean, maybe a little bit, but for the most part every day, I'm like, how does this go? Like, what am I doing? Uh You know, and, you know, thankfully, over time, the ratio there goes from like, you know, less of that to, but it's still there. And oftentimes, 
you know, you or some of the other, um, you know, newer, younger members of the team have the solution or have the answer. And if you're a leader and, and you're not listening to, you know, you're younger. Why did you, why did you bring these people on if you're not mm-hmm. interested in listening to somewhere there, you thought there was a reason to add this person to your team, which meant you thought they had some value to add. And, you know, for us, as you know, value in almost every case starts in like listening. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I feel like it definitely um, goes both ways in terms of like, who's got potentially the solution in any given moment. And then also something that you said reminded me that, again, we were, I think, in a conversation with some other newer, younger members in New York after some of those uh, events. And someone said something to the effect of, you know, I didn't think I had anything to say about that until you asked me what Mm -hmm. I had to say about that. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly all of this stuff came out that was incredibly valuable and helpful and powerful, right? And and the realization in that person to, to know that, oh, I do have something to add mm-hmm. and I do have yeah. something to say. And, and I think it's so important to provide those spaces because how is anyone going to learn that what they that not only do they have something important to contribute, but that that when they do it, it's going to become easier and easier and they get more confident and therefore be set up for success earlier than they might be, you know, otherwise. Mm-hmm. No, totally. I think like immediately this new iteration of the Empathy Project comes to mm-hmm. mind for me in that like. I know I've shared versions of this story on the podcast before, but like coming to you back in January being like, Mm. Hey, is anything like happening with this anymore? Um, And expecting you to either be like, nah, it's done or to be like, Oh yeah. Like I've had this idea. Maybe like you can help work on it or something like that. But instead you were like, why don't you go and brainstorm? And if you come up with something great. And I was like, okay. I don't think I have anything. But then pretty quickly, I was like, oh, I actually have a lot to say about this. Yeah. Um, um, and then I was like, okay, I think I have a plan, but also like, I'm not a playwright. So I'll like, I'll go mm-hmm. up to the playwriting line and then someone else needs to take it over. And so I did everything up to the playwriting line. And then it was like, mm, why don't you at least try this? You know what I mean? And, and so I did. And now it's like, I think it's going fairly well. Yeah. Um, and I would never have previously, like I said at the beginning, like script development is not something that I was particularly drawn to or thought that I had anything to offer. And now it's like 50% of my job it yeah. is these couple of script development projects. Yeah. And it, it is that like sometimes someone just needs to be like, you know, do you want this piece of pizza? And you're like, oh, I had not considered pizza before, but now that you offer it, I will try. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, pizza's best thing ever. Yeah. And that's like, I feel like that, that's a stupid analogy, but like that's no. been my experience with like writing and, and script development just in general is that I'm like, oh my gosh, I actually love this process. I love collaborating with other people and it is a process that is very full of of need for that which I've been Mm -hmm. grateful for and learned a lot from um and and yeah I just I would never have like stepped into that and so I think it offering the opportunity Mm. actively not just having it be a passive like oh it's there if you want it but like actively operating offering opportunities is a really powerful thing yeah and I think that goes back to the mission and the the bit of the language you read read off the website there, which is that, you know, I think after 15 years now, you know, I can obviously recite the mission and that language in my sleep, but you know, it, you live it every day for so long, it becomes just, you know, how we operate. And I know that maybe not everyone can operate that way, but since that was a core founding principle, you know, that whole bridge ramp idea, you know, we make Rachel and I talk a lot about how a lot of people talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. And for us, it's always 
incredibly important and we have conversations about it all the time to make sure we're doing it that we're actually walking the walk that what we say we're about and what we're doing that we're actively making sure that everyone we work with or even people that we don't work with our audiences or our you know people who follow us on online or look at our website whatever um that we're actively communicating in some way consistently that that's who we are and what we do and at the same time i would say too you also you know with people like you and several other folks that are working with us now we didn't we didn't always get lucky with providing those opportunities for everyone a lot of you know we've been doing this for 15 years and i would say just say um simply given the amount of time we've been doing it there's been probably more failure with that than there has been success in terms of cracking those doors open and providing that space and it just not always be uh, working out and being successful for all parties for for us for the other person but you do every now and then have these really rewarding and successful outcomes and and working relationships that develop just by the nature of you know now that we've been doing this for so long the the messaging is clear and the systems are a little more refined so we're attracting naturally people who are more in line you know that our values are all in line and less folks that we have to maybe clarify things with so we're starting in a much better place so i think the success rate is better because everyone is clear on who we are and what we do and it right away becomes clear whether someone who comes to us and wants to work with us is is uh lives in that same zone you know mm -hmm. yeah totally yeah. and and i would at least hope that even those um uh, instances where it's not gone super well or whatever like those things are still learning opportunities, oh, yeah. you know, for everyone involved. And it still is such a um, a powerful thing to have been offered an opportunity and have had it not go well or have had it be yeah. a big, like a massive learning curve. And then it's like, OK, now I know I don't want to touch that again. Or, OK, now I know maybe that is interesting to me, but like I need some more training or I should have listened yeah. to X, Y and Z or whatever. And, and same on your end, like as right. you continue to learn how to be a better leader and a better guide and a better facilitator, like you also get to learn from that. And um, I think so it's like not to trivialize the difficulty of, you know, when things don't go according to plan. Um, but even those moments still fit in yeah. so well with this mission, which I think is a cool thing. Well, and uh, absolutely. And a good example of um, something you were just talking about and, and likely alluding to was the um, our inner ENSO uh, programming and initiative, which, you know, is in its second cycle now, your first cycle facilitating it. And the, the first time around it, it didn't quite go um, as well as we'd all hoped. And like you're saying, though, there's always, um, even in those moments, valuable um, lessons and knowledge that we can all take and that I definitely took from that in terms of like, this is definitely a thing that can work. But in its first iteration, where everyone was just trying to figure it out, it didn't quite work. Why? Right. And what was my role in that? And what was everybody else's role in that? And then I can't control everybody else's role and, and what they necessarily um, how they're going to approach it. But I can control mine. And for me, yeah, it's valuable to take away from that experience. What didn't work and how what can I do to kind of adjust my approach? Um, and I mean, you can obviously speak to this better than I, but I feel like this cycle now is going really well. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not saying that's because I learned all the things I needed <laughs> to learn. I, it's, there's a lot of other reasons, but I think it it just is going well. And it would be interesting to hear you talk about um, kind of, you know, being 22 again and being in these rooms and in these roles, um, especially leading this inner ENSO group 
like how does that feel and how do you feel like it's going and what's that experience been yeah i think that's that's a good example because there was like there was a beautiful show that was produced from last yeah. year's inner and so yeah. and also just like yeah a big learning curve in that and i got to learn a lot about that from my predecessor and then just like as i've continued in this and so like i you know i i'm grateful for for everything that's happened and um i you know I, the shoulders that i have to stand on are very powerful and um and and then yeah this opportunity has been super cool for me to get to lead this year i think i mean i think i touched on this in in our inner enso episode but just like going into it being like probably going to be the youngest person here and therefore like least experienced in a lot of ways um and just being super upfront about that with everyone that i interviewed for the project um and getting to hear so many sweet perspectives from all these women who are anywhere from a couple years older than me to much further along in life than I am. Um, and and just hearing all of them, like pretty much without fail being like, that doesn't matter. Like we're just here to make art and age is just a number, like all perspectives are valuable. Um, and then truly feeling that way then as I've stepped into this role that um, I'm able to like facilitate in a way that is effective. I'm able to learn from all of the other amazing women that are around me. And I hope that maybe they're learning a couple of things from me here and there, but I know I'm learning from them. And uh, it's it's been a sweet experience and it's not been without it. It's like hiccups in the road, you know, in any collaborative process, there will be disagreements and there will be, you know, whatever miscommunication, but everyone has just been so gracious with me and with one another as we work through these processes. And I think that, where that comes from is just this level of like humility that I think we're we're talking about here, which is that it's like whether it's age or just like two people having different life experiences and different perspectives that no matter where we're coming from, each person is willing, you know, even if, you know, I'm in a moment where I'm like, I'm just really angry about this or whatever. And it's like, okay, I can sit down and I can try to open my ears to this other perspective and um, just seeing that in these really powerful women around me has been has been so sweet. Yeah, I'm really grateful. That's cool. And just for folks who maybe um, don't know, or it's been a while since they listened to the podcast that was about specifically the inner end. So when will that, where are you guys in that process right now? And where, uh, when can people expect to experience what's being created? Yes. Yeah. So we have this group of eight women that's been meeting all year and uh, we are producing our play, which is currently untitled. I call it the dragon play in my head, nice. but um, it's probably not what it will be called on paper. But uh, yeah, it'll be produced at 3 a.m. theater, which is in Astoria in New York City. Mm. Um, in I think we have the last weekend of April and the first weekend of May, which is super exciting. We're already starting to assemble certain members of cast and production team, um, and it's shaping up to be a really, really dope project. And it's also that much more special, you know, because we built it from the ground up. Like there was literally, there was like this much, there was zero was going nothing. on yeah. um, in February when we started meeting. And now we're on draft two of a play and that's bonkers. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. And you have... You, like you said, you uh, you mentioned you starting to put together a, a production team, right? An artistic mm -hmm. team and a production team. Um, and that is made up of, I would imagine, folks from the group and also folks you're bringing in from outside. Yeah, yeah. Some folks from outside. I specifically wanted to highlight, for the sake of this conversation, actually, um, one of the production team members that we're, we're bringing in. Um she was like recommended by one of our Outer Loop collaborators. We were like, hey, you know, we're looking for someone to fill this role. Do you know of anyone that would be good? And our collaborator immediately was like, this is this is the lady. She's got you. Um, so we reach out to her. We're talking. We have a little Zoom meeting with me, her and Rachel. And she she was super straight up with us. She was like, I don't actually have experience in this role that I'm like interviewing for. Um, I have experience like around it, but not, I've never actually done it before, but I've always 
wanted to. It's something that I feel like I would be good at, that I've seen a lot of, and that I I think is something I want to step into, but I haven't been able to find anywhere to give me the opportunity because I don't have experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, she like felt really connected to the story that we're telling, which was super sweet. Um, but she was like, I have a list of people who are, I know who are more qualified than me, who I think would connect to this story if you don't want to hire me. And I totally understand if you don't want to hire me because I don't have experience. Mm -hmm. And Rachel and I were just sitting there like, bro, no, you're, you're the perfect person for this role because partially just because she's so excited about the story. She feels so passionately. It like hits her so personally. Um, and and it was just like heartbreaking, but also exciting to see her being like, I know I'm not qualified here. I'll I'll send you other people and to be like, no, that's actually what we're here for. Like, that's actually our entire mission is to put you in this position mm-hmm. and support you through that position since it is a new a new like territory for you. But just also like allow you to spread your wings and see what yeah. happens. Yeah. And who knows? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I have no doubt. <laughs> no, I have no doubt either. And yeah. yeah, I think, you know, that I that um, made me think of two other really cool examples of that recently and that recently, but also are coming back around right now, um, because as people may recall uh, from previous conversations or if you're looking at any of our social media anywhere, you know that we have this production 13 Suits coming up in um, November and December in Chicago. And something that really, uh, that that what you were just talking about um, made me think of almost to like verbatim, this similar situation was our stage manager of that New York production, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, like applied for the job and you know we had never met before and similar conversation you know look i i want to do this but i have never done it before and and it was you know it was a pretty big undertaking because it was a full production a big production you know in new york um a lot a, a huge fast learning curve but just that feeling of i mean we had so many people with so much more experience apply for that job but it was just clear right away that this person, what this person brought and could bring and did ultimately bring to the process um, was, was above and beyond maybe the skills that they to that point acquired. Mm -hmm. And like, we can teach those skills pretty quickly if you're open to it. And it was more about like who this person is and, and the, the fit. And of course it worked out brilliantly to, to the point that, you know, I still talk about it as you to as you know to this day that it it was kind of it blew my mind how well this person did having never done it once before mm-hmm. and this person did it so well that they're now doing it again for this upcoming production of uh, of that show in Chicago because I can't imagine anyone else doing it at this point yeah um and then I think someone else too in this process that started out as an intern with us uh, went to Tanzania with us and then did another little internship stint after that with us. And then has now come on board. Also, I think graduated the same time as you or around the same time. Yeah. And who's interested in directing and wanted to, to work as an assistant director to me in this show. But we quickly realized in, in some recent conversations that there's no reason for me to be the director and for her to be the assistant director, Mm. we very quick, I very quickly realized that it should be the two of us directing Mm. the show. Um, And when I presented that idea, you know, she said to me, you know, last year, if you'd said that, I would say, I don't think I'm quite ready. But because of all of the the kind of, you know, work we've done together over the last year Mm. and, and tried to get her in a space where she was ready, she said, I'm actually ready for that now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I do want to do that. And that's exciting for everybody, for her, for me. And now, now suddenly for me, this is a shared role that we'll both have as much to learn from each other. And like people, anyone who I just encourage anyone who in a leadership position who might be a little hesitant or afraid of what that could lead to, to think twice about it and, and to act out, not out of fear and out of, you know, um, 
empowerment and encouragement and bravery and faith, whatever mm -hmm. those words mean to you, because in my experience, that's always worked out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. It is it's good, good stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think we, we're also throughout this conversation, we're 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 using language like young um, artists mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. because of the nature of, of what we're talking about. But I think you always try to emphasize that it doesn't always mean that. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think about I mean, I think about you who like didn't get into theater until I mean, not like. Right. later years but like you didn't go to college when you were 18 right. for theater and those sorts of things right. like it took a few years i think about one of our inner enso members who mm -hmm. was a high school english teacher and then retired and was like i still have plenty of energy i guess i'll audition for this like community theater show and now theater is like a really big part of what she does in her retired life and that like no point of life is ever like too late to start something new and so it's not just young artists trying to give these experiences to but also artists who are like young in their artistry who are like new mm. to the industry um and just wanting to give people that extra like boost that they need to be doing what they're like called to do at whatever point in their life they're at yeah yeah for sure so i mean you know if you've not if you've been listening to this conversation and you have uh yet to determine the value of providing <laughs> career opportunities for young artists. I don't know that you've been listening closely, but yeah, um, start over. <laughs> start over because it's there, right? Um, and it is valuable. And I've, it's mm -hmm. more than valuable. I don't even know that that captures it for me. It's the success that we're now experiencing as an organization, especially over the last couple of years, is due absolutely in large part to this idea and and concept and putting into practice this concept and idea of um g identifying young artists or, or young career emerging career early career artists um g that are ready to take on some significant r roles and responsibilities and then also just you know providing supervision and guidance you know mm -hmm. but not i hesitate to use this word just because i don't like the word in general but i think it for lack of a better word you'll likely come up with a, a better word for this but um you know not control mm -hmm. um more more like guidance and mm -hmm. yeah is that right does that feel like how it is yeah, no, totally. It's like, if I'm ever like, hey, I just don't know how to do this. You know what I mean? Like, you're yeah. always there to be like, hey, here's how to do this. Or let me connect you with this person that does. Um, but I think one thing that's been I've found super powerful, like from the beginning of our working relationship is that like, I don't feel afraid to say no to you, like to be right. like, Mm, I disagree with that idea. Like, yeah, let's actually go this other direction. And, and you do the, because you do the same to me. You're like, no, don't like it. Let's stay. Yeah. But I feel that it's not like this like boss employee relationship in that way no. where you're the only one that gets to like say no. It's it is I can be like, no, we're not doing that. And you're like, yeah. oh, okay, let's talk about that. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and so yeah, it is it's like allowing the these like newer artists to kind of like spread our wings, but giving, you know, giving the like what's it called? You know, where the planes take off. <laughs> the, the like the, the where the planes they the take runway, off at the airport the oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that was terrible. i was like how does the airport work into this but yeah i think the, the runway is right yeah, yeah yeah for sure yes giving the runway like for yeah. that to happen um, yeah 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 that's cool uh, yeah it's been yeah. good yeah i i mean we could talk about this forever yeah but um, but i think i'm super grateful that like we were able to have this conversation and that mm -hmm that is like such a big focus of of where we're at as a company and i do hope yeah. that this has like inspired our listeners um yeah so i'm just really grateful to everybody that's listening we'll be back next thursday um wherever you get your podcasts and follow us on social media as was touched on here we've got a couple of shows coming up and a bunch of other really exciting opportunities so keep posted on on everything that's going on and uh do you have a little call to action for us I do. I think it's it's a two part 
call to action. Um, mm -hmm. I think given our conversation, you know, I think it would be helpful for any of our younger listeners or earlier career listeners to think about, you know, what opportunities do you feel ready for, but are waiting for someone to bring to you hmm. or bring mm -hmm. you into. Um, but also the flip side, if you are someone in like my position, if you're like an arts leader or, a, you know, um, you know, running some type of organization or, or in a position to be able to offer those opportunities for um, some younger or early career artists, um, what opportunities do you have that you could more proactively, um, you know, put out there or message in order to encourage some of those folks to, to engage with your work and your organization. I think, I think everybody on both sides could do some thinking about that. Totally. I love that. And if you come up with any grand thoughts or even little thoughts, we love to hear your answers. You can always email us at podcast at outerlooptheater.org. We'd love to hear from you and hear what you got out of the episode. Totally. But yeah, that's cool. all we got this week. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Right, bye. bye.